Hi, I'm Jill McCann. And I'm Maureen Byrne. Welcome to the Spring 2019 Accessible Curriculum for All cohort. There are a few members of our staff who couldn't be here for this video today, so we'd like to introduce them to you anyhow. And this is Jillian King. She is our boss and also the SELPA coordinator uh, who heads up the assistive technology program and the ACA project. This is Dr. Anna Cobble and she is a program specialist with our Placer County SELPA with an extensive background in universal design for learning. So next up is Ashley Saren. She is the coordinator for curriculum and instruction, and she also has extensive background in UDL. Last but not least is Brian Givens. Brian is our AT provider. He is also a speech language pathology assistant, and his other job is our teleprompting man who is behind the scenes today helping us out. We are so pleased that you have signed up for this ACA cohort. Hopefully it was voluntary rather than voluntold. But either way, we think you'll come away with very relevant information and very usable resources. Thank you for watching this short video describing a bit of the background of the ACA project and what will be covered during the upcoming trainings. The Accessible Curriculum for All, ACA, is a unique train-the-trainer model of deep dives into the integration of UDL and digital AT tools. It also includes a framework for a team-based consideration process for both, again, UDL and AT. The project was developed to support the progression towards one educational system for all students. And by using the principles of universal design for learning, or UDL, and assistive technology, AT. We believe this to be a recipe which can empower school sites and teams to build the capacity to support all students in being successful. Mo, can you tell us what drove the decision for us to design such a program? So first of all, Jill, we were really completely overwhelmed by the huge numbers of referrals coming in from districts and just really not enough experts. By the way, there aren't really that many AT experts in the area. So we really needed to take a shift to more of a capacity building model instead of the expert driven model. We were concerned that students weren't getting the supports they needed in a timely manner, and teams really didn't have enough knowledge about the resources available to really help support their own students' needs. We also needed to assist our districts in aligning with key recommendations from the California Statewide Special Education Task Force. These recommendations are currently driving legislation, budgeting, policy changes, initiatives, and program reviews across California. Since 2014, the participants of our cohorts have crossed all levels of district personnel, including both general education and special education teachers, superintendents, assistant superintendents, principals, and many service providers, such as speech and language pathologists, assistants, and occupational therapists. We'd like to tell you a little bit more about what you'll be learning during this cohort. Don't worry about taking notes right now. Just sit back, relax, and listen. You will have access to all of the course materials on our website, which has all of the info you'll need to refer to. There will be four face-to-face -face meetings here at Placer County Office of Education in Auburn. And the first one, Unit 1, will be on February 13th. Unit 2 will be on March 6th. Unit 3 will be on April 4th. And the final unit will be on April 24th. So here's a preview of what you will be learning in the upcoming units. So the first thing is really what exactly is universal design for learning? UDL is a framework that embraces variability, it removes barriers, and really it supports all students as expert learners through specific strategies that are based on what we know about how we learn. UDL is standard-based, 
goal-driven and requires a paradigm shift in how we as educators really approach the design for learning experiences. Throughout this cohort, we will be taking deep dives into this definition. We're going to be breaking it apart phrase by phrase. The goal is really by the end of our time together, we'll really know what a UDL mindset is and we'll be able to share the UDL <clears throat> big three. First one is what is the standard-based goal of my lesson? The second is how am I going to remove barriers and provide access for all students to reach their goal? Third one is how am I going to support all students as expert learners? Jill, what else will participants be diving into? Funny you should ask, Mo. I think I've got your answer. Okay. Well, we are going to dive into the digital tools and assistive technologies, which can help support all learners in the UDL designed classroom, as well as those AT tools to support specific student needs. What is assistive technology, or AT? It is an important factor in reducing barriers for students in order to access the curriculum. The federal definition from IDEA defines assistive technology as any item, piece of equipment, or product system, whether acquired commercially, off the shelf, modified, or customized, that is used to increase, maintain, or improve functional capabilities of a child with a disability. The goal is that by the end of our time together, you will have a greater knowledge of the guiding principles of assistive technology in K-12 settings. You will also learn about digital tools to support UDL and also specific students' individual needs. You'll also learn more about digital tools which support common core areas of reading, writing, math, and executive functioning. So Mo, when our participants understand the UDL framework and the principles and also have a large resource of digital tools under their belt, what can they do with all this knowledge? Jill, I'm glad you asked that question. The last unit, which is Unit 4, will really focus on the team consideration process. We have developed what we call a Student Access Plan, or SAP for short. We will focus on creating a student access plan that can be used by teams to help the process of considering UDL and AT strategies as well as tools to support all students. So the goal is that by the end of our time together, you will have a greater knowledge of and tools to facilitate and contribute to a SAP team meeting by utilizing the SAP guide and forms and your knowledge of UDL strategies, as well as digital AT tools. So now we'd like to give you a short tour of the course um, from the website perspective. Um, I'm assuming since you are watching this that you may have already poked around on the website a bit and started the tour all on your own, but let us just show you some real basics to get started. We are going to assume since you're watching this video that you have already made it to the course page because of the email that we had sent out that helped you navigate there. But this will just be a quick refresher um, in case you land on the site and you want to know how to get there. Um, under professional development, there is a link for the cohort login. And once you click on that, you will again click on the spring 2019 you will be prompted to put in a passcode, and that passcode is SPRING2019, all lowercase. Once there, you see the, the units and the course laid out for you. Um, we are currently in Gear Up. I'm going to go in and view. And this is how the courses will be set up, including uh, units one through four. The syllabus will always be there for you to easily view. You click on it, it opens right up. You will have a to-do list and this will just help you kind of go through the tasks that need to happen during the particular unit. For Gear Up right now, um, you are viewing the welcome intro and you are going to review the syllabus right away. Um, you're going to look at the slideshow 
and you're going to go into uh, the CAS UDL Theory and Practice free ebook, and you're going to create a username and password. And then at your leisure, you will read to uh, chapter two of UDL Theory and Practice sometime before you come to PCOE for unit one. There is also a document called Supporting Reading that is a pre-read document prior to attending unit one. And then you will complete the exit card. These orange arrow buttons will take you right back to the gear up and this is where you'll find your learning materials if you view those you'll see everything you need to complete all your tasks um, right now we're making this video so the video is not actually embedded yet so it says coming soon but it will actually be there by the time you see this and there's a link to the book that will take you right to the page where you uh, create your username and login you will have a link here to open up um, a PDF version of the um, content that we want you to read. It's just a, a slideshow that has been turned into a PDF. Let me go back. Um, the exit card is right here. Um, super simple. Just a few questions. Actually, this one is just one question. And uh, you will be asked to complete an exit card after each unit so that we can gain better understanding of your learning and continually make improvements to the ACA project. And that is basically it for now. There is a lot of other stuff in this website and we will be reviewing it as we progress through the different units. Please contact one of us if you have any issues logging in or accessing your course materials. Okay, so in wrap up, we've got a lot of great stuff to show you over the next few meetings, and it may seem kind of a bit overwhelming at first, but hang in there and well, it'll all come together at the end of this cohort. And remember, this is really important to bring a laptop or a device to all of the trainings so that you can access the materials and the tools. If you happen to have both a laptop and an iPad, you might want to bring both. So please feel free to email either myself or Jill if you have any questions about the coursework or the website access. So we're going to see you IRL in real life on February 13th here at PCOE.